Hello guys, uh, we're today we're going to do a UDK tutorial on how to create a matinee door, or a moving door as it were. Uh, first thing, I would like to apologise for any background noise you may hear. It's uh, unfortunate but unavoidable where I'm recording. So, firstly, we're going to need a door. So we come up to the content browser and we open it. Now you see here I already have a door here, but I'll show you how to find that very quickly. Uh, see here the search bar is going to get rid of that, and we're going to deselect static meshes. You see here when you originally come into the content browser it should have all selected. This is everything within the content browser. Now we're just looking for a door static mesh so we're going to just check the static meshes so we're only searching through them. I'm just going to come up here to the search bar and we're going to type in door. And you see these are my first few options. Now they will have these symbols beside them, don't worry you can just click on that. You see it says not loaded there. Uh, you can just click on that and it uh, becomes fully loaded. Now, I already have this fully loaded, so I'm just going to drag this in. You can use any door, really. You can use any object, any static mesh, sorry. You can use any static mesh in a matinee. It's just a door makes the most sense. So, we're just going to close the content browser, as we don't really need it anymore. And over here, we see our door. Now, the door itself isn't good enough. We need to actually convert this to something called a mover. And what we do is we select it with the left click, and then we right click on it. And we come down here to convert, and you see here it's convert static mesh actor to mover. That's what we actually need to do. Convert to mover. Now we can actually stick it into a matinee. Now just before we do that, I'm going to add in a trigger. I want this matinee sequence to be activated by me activating a trigger. I'm just going to right click here, go to add actor, it's all the way down here, and add trigger. And I'm just going to press F4 to get into its properties and increase its size to 120 and 80. Very good. I'm just going to put this in front of the door so I know where it is, as these cannot be seen once you're inside the game without some kind of marker. There. Excellent. Now, another point that I should just go through is uh, just press uh, here to get your four views up. And uh, I'm just going to scroll out so I can see where I am. And there's my door. I'm just going to scroll in on my door. Now, as you can see, the if I go to the rotational mode, uh, to get to that, while you, have it while you have your mover now selected, you can press space and it comes up the rotational menu. And if you press space again, you can get to the scaling menu. And if you press space again, you can get to the movers. But I'm just going to press space once and I get to the rotation. Now, I want this to be a rotating door rather than just a sliding door. Now, to do that, what I need to do is I need to move this point. This is called the pivot point. And to move the pivot point, what we must do is come to wherever you want it to pivot. You can come to the center or here at the latch. I'm going to do it at the latch, as again, it makes the most sense. You come to where you want it to pivot from, and you right click, and you come up here to pivot. And you come up here to move pivot point, or move here, rather, and you select. Now, we're not done yet. We need to save that. So right over that position again, just right click, come back up to pivot, and save pivot to pivot point, to pre-pivot point. This means now that if I press space and go to the rotational, I will actually rotate from that point now. You can really do this from anywhere. It's just nice to get to change up these things as sometimes they're offset. Okay, so now we can actually go into the Kismet programming end of the matinee and rotation. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to select our trigger and we need to open up Kismet. Now with the trigger selected, as you can see there, we're just going to right click and we're going to go with new event using trigger 2 and we want it to activate when it's touched. So when the trigger is touched, it will activate a matinee. And when, how we get a matinee is right click, new matinee. And we want it to do is, when the trigger is touched, we want to play the matinee. And when the trigger is untouched, we want to reverse the matinee. This is because uh, once we play the matinee, if we do not reverse it, it won't be able to play again. Uh, another thing we need to do is go into the trigger and change the uh, property of sequence events uh, max trigger count to zero. If we do not change it to zero, it's uh, default at one, and it means that the trigger can only be activated once. So uh, we want to be able to activate this multiple times as the door. So the max trigger count is set to zero, so now it can be activated an infinite number of times. So we'll just close this up. So that's the trigger all set up and prepared. Now we just need to set up our matinee. Now our matinee involves the door, so we're going to select our door, which has been already converted to a mover. That's a very important part, otherwise it will not work in the matinee. 
So we're going to just double click on the matinee to open up this menu here. Uh, we no longer need Kismet open, so we can just close that. And now once in here, you see there's no groups, nothing at all. It's just a nice blank little page. What we come, to, what we come in here to do is to set up the matinee. So you come to this box here, and we right click. And we come to Add New Empty Group. And we're just going to call the empty group door. Make sure that the door is selected while you do this. Uh, it just helps for the next process. Now the door in, inside of the actual level is connected to this. Now as you can see there's nothing really we can do yet. We need to add a movement track to this and to do that we right click and we scroll down to add new movement track. This will actually allow us to move the door around and such. Now what we must do is with the door selected we press enter and that activates the first keyframe. The keyframes are little nodes, you could say, that uh, keep registry on where the door is uh, throughout the matinee. And then you see here this black bar uh, comes through the time scaling and we'll scroll through the matinee once we've created it. Uh, the maximum time for this current matinee is from 0 seconds up to 5 seconds. Now the next thing to do is just to drag this black bar over to wherever you want the door to be at the next point, uh, say here middle and press uh, and we'll rotate it slightly and I'll press enter now that door should rotate to that point in that time you see as I'm demonstrating here in that time frame the door rotates to that point now this can be we can stage the door so it opens very slowly it could be a creaky door something like that but I'm just going to drag this out here again and you see the continues on it's very slow. Now what we can do is we can delete that keyframe and it goes back to the original position as it was locked in here. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to drag this out to the end. I'm going to rotate this almost fully. Let's we'll say 180 degrees. If that's good enough. And we'll press in our keyframe here. So that means after 5 seconds the door will have turned 180. And then once we stop using the trigger, the trigger will then cause it to reverse 180. You can come up with some very useful things for this. Now we're just going to exit the matinee and we're just going to build the level so everything will work. And then we're just going to click play from here and we're going to walk over to the door and see if it works. Now one thing about a mover is that once you have converted a static mesh, static mesh to a mover, it uh, loses its collision, meaning that anything can just pass through it. I'll show you how to add collision to it, but for the purpose of the tutorial it's not needed, but I will show you how to do it just after this. I do again apologize for any background noise where I'm recording, it's unavoidable. As you can see there's a nice floating door, we'll go over right in front of it to activate our trigger, it should be about here, and there's our rotating door. Our door rotates around, and then if I step off the trigger, it rotates back. Beautiful. Now one thing you'll be able to notice is that if it rotates, I can actually walk right through it. Now I'll show you how to add collision to it so that nothing can pass through the door. So you could actually build some sort of uh, prison cell if you'd like. So with the door selected, we have to press F4 to go into its properties. You see Interactor 1 properties. We'll just drag those over. And we need to come down here to the collision menu. We drop it down. And you see here on the collision type, it has no collision selected. We drop down this menu and we select collision block all. This means nothing will be able to pass through this door effectively making it a real door. So then we just close this down, we'll effectively just rebuild. takes a moment, uh, depending on how good your specs are on your computer, this will take longer or shorter lengths of time. There we are. Now you can just ignore the errors. and um, We'll just hit play from here as we have a player start. And we'll just walk over to our door. See here it begins to open. If we go a bit closer. But see, we cannot just pass through it as before, as it is actually a solid door now. We'll do it from the other side so it's a bit more clear to you, as the screen seems to be a bit laggy. You can see here I can't actually push through the door like I could before because I have added collision. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, please check out more videos on the online design teacher YouTube channel.